Hi, everyone. Welcome to our table talk for this week. I'm Pastor Bill, and I'm joined today by Pastor Angela, and we're discussing Pastor John's sermon from the Book of Acts as we're moving back into that great series. And uh, today he started off talking about understanding our expectations. Flowed a little bit out of last week when, when we were all together in a panel talking about expectations. But this was a little more weighty. Uh, it was about our expectations of safety in the short term. And Pastor John pointed out that we are in a real spiritual war. Mm -hmm. So Pastor Angela, as you were listening to the sermon, what was your reaction? Well, I think that statement uh, about the safety in the short term um, and that this is a real war, uh, it shouldn't be a surprise. I mean, Ephesians 6 talks about we need to put on the armor of God. We are, as Christians, should be prepared for um, facing battle. And uh, I think that uh, we know stories, Christians around the world even, not just here, of course, but Christians around the world are facing persecution, facing attacks from the enemy. Uh, it's something that John has spoken about, actually wrote a book, Deliverance. And that particular book talks about um, handling evil, and, uh, and how we should be equipped to do that. So uh, it's not a surprise to me that John would boldly declare this is a spiritual war, but it shouldn't be a surprise to any of us. No, it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a, a bit of a change of pace this week because we've been hearing the wonderful stories of the amazing things in the book of Acts, you know, breakthroughs for the Samaritans and breakthroughs for Roman centurion and, and uh, breakthroughs for in Antioch. Uh, but now we have a horror story. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, James is murdered and, uh, and Peter's thrown in jail. And it, it's, it's hard. Mm -hmm. it, it reminded me when Jesus said, in this world you'll have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have that assurance, but it's still hard. So how do you process all that? Well, uh, for one thing, I'm really thankful for that verse. I mean, when Jesus was standing in front of his disciples, he told them ahead of time, you're going to have trials because of your Christianity. When you serve in the name of Jesus, there will, will be persecution. So he warned them of that. But then when he even said that verse, says, take heart, I've overcome the world. So with that comes peace, um, a reassurance to know that uh, Jesus is victorious in this life. Uh, that should bring us peace. Uh, but I think it also is a really helpful reminder that uh, as Christians, when we face these trials, um, we're not expected necessarily to do this alone. He told us at that moment, I've overcome the world. That tells us we need to lean on him. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and th when we face persecution, the first thing we need to do is call on his name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. You know, I, I, I think um, uh, e even as we think about um, the, the fifth verse in, in that passage, um, you know, Peter, he, he was kept in prison. Um, and the church, they, they were prompted then to respond, and they were handling that by, by praying um, specifically for him. Uh, it was really fervent. They, they gathered in a house and, and started praying. It's such a great response. Um, you know, Bill, I, you've been in ministry longer than I have a few years. And so I'm curious, you know, for yourself, like how have you seen that type of experience happen in the church? Well, it, it's interesting you, you asked that because I, I was thinking back to a time way back in the 70s. Hmm. And I was a part of a prayer group that prayed for missionaries. And one of our requests uh, was for China. And at that time, all the Christians could do was have a radio station outside of China trying to beam in radio signals where they read the Bible uh, so that people could at least hear the Bible. Uh, and because uh, the, the government was just repressing Christians. Mm -hmm. But that was in 1970s. In the early 2000s, I got to visit China because it had opened up because the government had loosened things up. And I got to meet church leaders that had been operating house churches all through that time. So God had been working through the prayers of the church. And that really encouraged me. 
Yeah, absolutely. God, God works through the prayers of the church. I mean, even in this story here, uh, the church gathered, they prayed and Peter's released. It's, it's a miracle. Mm -hmm. And he's able uh, to go to the house where they're gathering for prayer. And, mm -hmm. and it's just incredible response there. Um, you know, you contrast that with Herod and how he's dealt with. Right. And uh, it's it's very interesting. The story uh, takes a turn there ex describing that and how uh, God always wins. Um, and so yeah, I'm just curious, like, uh, have you also got an example of that in our times? Well, I, I think the China example is goes back to that as well, because it was Chairman Mao mm -hmm. who was uh, the leader of China for all of that repression caused so many uh, repressive acts against the church, but he passed. And once he passed, God did a new thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, prayer still works and prayer still deals with leaders we don't think we'll ever be able to deal with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it, we need to have right expectations that there's the reality of this war uh, and um, God does the amazing things, the breakthroughs happen, beautiful things happen, occur, and, and yet tragedy still happens. Uh, God uses deliverance and injustice to bring people to eternal life, Pastor John says. That's not easy. Yeah. Uh, uh, and during real moves of God, there's still opposition. So how do you put all that together in your mind? Well, I think that any single time that God's people are on the move, the enemy is always at work as well. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, knowing that um, should guide how we go about doing our work. But I appreciated pa Pastor John's emphasis that it shouldn't be out of fear. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's reorienting your expectation um, that we're not living in a fearful state, mm -hmm. um, but rather that the response um, is based on that. This is the amazing pattern that we're going to continue to see throughout Acts. There's persecution, gospel spreads, the disciples go to a new place. There's mm -hmm. persecution, gospel spreads, the disciples go to a new place. It, it continues to repeat itself, and, mm -hmm. and that actually is a pattern that we should be quite aware of um, for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and Pastor John, I think, was encouraging us at the end to process our expectations. You know, it's, we, we look around at the stuff that's happening and it's heavy. And, uh, and we need to be asking ourselves and asking the Lord to show us what our expectations really are like. And that's something we can discuss in our connect groups. Uh, and how do we break through? What, what, what are the steps each of us needs to take? So prayer becomes the key. Mm -hmm. And I know you want to say a few things about that. Well, I, I mean, one of my favorite verse, uh, songs is the battle belongs to the Lord. And it says, uh, when I fight, I will fight on my knees. And so we as a church have uh, worked towards creating opportunities where prayer can be the response um, of individuals. And so I think about how Pastor Lucas gathered a Pickering site for the first week of this year and uh, for several nights in a row gathered together to pray uh, for this ministry year. Uh, Pastor Robin, she sends out every single month prayer requests for our local and our global partners. Um, on the 29th of January, you gathered with uh, Connect Group leaders online for a time of listening prayer. And um, Pastor Brent right now is organizing a team of individuals who would intercede on behalf of the youth on meeting on Thursday nights. Uh, we're also talking about uh, trying to plan an initiative for more of a monthly uh, prayer opportunity for people to gather online. So I think the invitation here is if the way that we fight our battles is on our knees, uh, are you as a connect group fervently praying for uh, the things that uh, you're being called to pray for? And are you also taking uh, an opportunity to get engaged in any of these other opportunities that I've just mentioned? Great. Well, thanks for the encouragement. We really appreciate that you're meeting together uh, in your groups, and we pray that God would help you in your discussions to be able to get your expectations right so we can all be moving forward for Christ. Thank you.